So I've had the, the great pleasure of visiting with Sip in his home in Euclid. And uh, I, I was impressed with two things really captured my attention. One was his literal wall of books, um, his grand bookcase with all kinds of texts, most of them historical biographies and texts on politics and race and racial heritage. Those, those are areas I know you have great concern and great knowledge um, for. But also a story you told me about your, um, as an adult, not realizing you didn't know your mother's maiden name. Can you share just a bit about well, that? Well, Dr. White, you might be old enough to uh, recall the presentation in the 1970s of the miniseries Roots. Uh, by uh, Alex Haley. I was 39 years old and working as a television engineer in Hollywood. And several of us engineers were sitting around and a lot of them were discussing their own genealogical roots because of the, the roots thing. And uh, after a while, one of them paused and looked at me with a smile and the rest of them started to snigger and laugh. Obviously, the implication was that being a descendant of slaves, I probably didn't have too much to say. Well, interestingly, I was the most educated in the group, but I sat there just mortally chagrined because the reality was I realized I didn't even know my mother's maiden name. But spurred on by that uh, moment of chagrin, over the years, my genealogical research would place me squarely, securely, and proudly in the middle of the stream of human history. <sighs> Finding five of my great, of my eight great grandparents, and placing me in the middle of a genealogical chart that now includes more than 900 names. And there was one curious fact that was a, a little hard to, to grab because my grandfather was born in 1837. And it was like a chattel slave for 28 years before I found his name on the voters roll in 1868 in Alabama. It just left me with such a visceral connection to both slavery and freedom. And through it all, two kind of powerful realizations began to take hold. The first was, for in, in a universal sense, how boringly the same we all are as human beings. And the other was, from a personal point of view, how excitingly unique we all can become <clears throat> over a lifetime. Now, as we barrel into the 21st century, there is one reality shift that for me is one that we all are going to have to face whether we are ready or not. And that is our feelings, thoughts, and behaviors around the illusions of race. And I just hope this little ditty of a song that I'm going to sing will help some of us think about how we might approach this, this, this reality shift. One that we all seem to say we want, but seem to daily elude us all. Thank you, Doc. Babies come into this world not a season. And even though we don't, they know the reason. 
And the one who sends them, give them gifts to carry. Tell them, children, take your time, but do not tarry. You will all arrive but naked, equally endowed to make it. You should have everything you need when you get there. You should never have to eat the grapes of wrath. You should never have to eat the grapes of wrath. Gods and babies do not know how we're divided. Hard to send them never would have been decided. Red and brown, black and white is how we mark them. Rich and poor, high and low is how we start them. Why do we make those distinctions when we don't have an inkling of what each child will bring or how they'll share? We just take and crush their gifts like we don't care as we send them out to harvest the grapes of wrath. So we all get in line for a young one. Some will grab 10 or 12, some will get none. And the children grabbed by rich ones will be pampered. Then the children left to poor ones will be hampered. Why do we act like such heathens? When every known religion teaches us each and every child is in our care, they should never have to eat the grapes of wrath. Why do we make those distinctions when we don't have an inkling of what each child will bring? They'll share. We just take and crush their gifts like we don't care. Then we send them out to harvest the grapes of wrath. You know, we send them out to harvest the grapes of wrath.